Nigeria is a country blessed with numerous resources. Join me. Join me. Join me. Join me. Experience Niger. Unconfirmed reports have it that Nigeria is blessed with countless number of mysterious and very powerful lakes scattered across the country. Some of these lakes are even held sacred and adored and could very well pass for tourist attraction centers. One of such sites is the Ebomi Lake. Tucked away in the rustic and pristine forest of Igbesi Akoku in Akoku Southeast Local Government Area of Undo State, the lake, which is often referred to as the bottomless lake because of its undefined depth, is notable as a tourist and relaxation center which photographers and nature-loving tourists will enjoy. This 2 km long and about 50 meter wide lake is deified in the community. The lake has a rich history and is a notable site where some popular local festivals are held. Although essentially untapped, this lake is home to some rare species of fish that could be seen swimming majestically in the clean water. The lakeside is also a wildlife site of some sorts, as antelopes, bush pigs, mischievous squirrels, a variety of birds and fish can be seen in this site. Nearby is the river Oshe. Both flow beside each other without flowing into one another as they are divided by a stretch of rock with thick forest canopies subtly camouflaging its steep banks. Although trees surround the lake, it is mysterious to note that leaves never float on the lake. No one is allowed to bathe, fish or fetch water from the lake as the inhabitants of Igbesiakoko believes and the lake is worshipped once every year. It is also found between an estimated boundary between Edo and Undo states. History has it that the people of Igbesi met the lake at that point known as Igbesi and these said people popularly refer to this body of water as the bottomless lake. The lake boasts of a special priest whose responsibility it is to fervently and consistently appease the lake and its powers in times of trouble and general protection of the town. It is expressly forbidden to put on any red clothes, fabric or material when approaching the lake. It is believed that anyone who violates these would be attacked by the forest and would have bad luck following them until a cleansing ceremony is performed to appease the deity of the lake. According to the inhabitants, sacred white chickens can occasionally be seen around the lake and it is forbidden to touch any of them. But if one of them follows you upon leaving the lake, then it is believed the deity favors you and has gifted you the chicken which you could then carry along and do with as you please. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. The Dajo Pottery is an international multi-award winning ceramic industry in Nigeria. First ever to produce in commercial quantity marble ceramic wares in the country and first in Africa to attain the digital ceramic technology. It has put the nation on the map with its unique designs and sheer will of its owner. The pottery, which was founded in 1984, is the brainchild of master porter and international ceramic icon Mr. Levi Yakubu. Working against men's apathy towards the craft of pottery, he became the first man in the Thief tribe of millions to embrace the art. You see, the apathy and contempt our people have for women activities and pottery being one of the dominant ones made it such a way that emphasis wasn't given to the best of brains to specialize in, in, in ceramics. And that has affected the sector up to today. And so on graduation, those who specialize in ceramics could not stand alone to, to set up their ceramic practices. I have been the first ABU graduate to establish this kind of edifice in ceramics. 
And so on graduation, I came back to Benue State. I was a lecturer in ceramics at the State Polytechnic. Now it used to be called Murtala College of Arts, Science and Technology. But when Buhari Idi Abum administration came and uh, banned the importation of ceramic tableware in 1984, I decided to resign my appointment as a lecturer in ceramics to establish this because that policy pronouncement restricting or banning importation of tableware ceramics and the whole of northern Nigeria was just Ladi Kwali ceramic pottery uh, or Ladi Kwali uh, pottery in uh, Suleja. The whole of west it was just uh, rich ware pottery in Ilupeju and the east boasted of uh, uh, modern ceramics from Moya. And Kano had uh, one chalawa, but it was sanitary. So who was going to supply the, the huge demand gap that was created with this policy pronouncement? I took it as a personal, professional challenge. So I resigned in 85, June of 85, and came to this site. It was the heat of, or the thick of jungle. I could not drive to this location. I would park by the main road about 200 uh, meters away and walk to this place uh, to establish uh, my pottery because of the presence of uh, the raw material here. With the talent running through four generations and outstanding educational performances, it is no surprise why standardizing the art of pottery was personal to Mr. Yakubu, who is popularly referred to as Mr. Dajo. The pottery has grown from an initial staff strength of 10 to 52 thereby creating job opportunities for the immediate community as well as encouraging art lovers. Over time, this tourist site has attracted many from all over the world. Since its inception, the pottery has won some of the most prestigious awards in ceramics and pottery. These include for three consecutive years the International Ceramic Excellence Award in Jigdazen City, China. The expo features about 800 ceramic companies and 10,000 dealers of ceramic products from more than 80 countries around the world annually. For 30 years, the Dajo Pottery also provided training pro bono for university students in the industrial training scheme, thus encouraging a future generation of pottery artists and enthusiasts. The universities are just... Uh like uh, uh, clinics without, without, without drugs. You go and they tell you this, you have to compose this and this and this, and then you be well. But here, we don't prescribe. We teach them the ropes of how to, to start as a beginner, to a professional. So the industrial, uh, students' industrial works experience, which is CWES as they call it, uh, they come here and we run them through. Uh, Mr. Mbajume has been one of our pioneer porters. He's been with me for 28 years and he is one of those that that teaches uh, uh, all the students how to make uh, pottery. And he, he is more or less a professor because what he can do our professors in ceramics cannot do. The skills God has given him uh, lacking to those skills Lady Kwali had without going to a former school. She, she, was, she was a doctor in ceramics and so this is another one. And several of them like him have been with me all these years and we are mentoring the younger ones. All the tertiary institutions that offer ceramics, they see their students here for six months placement in uh, IT, industrial training. And we have been offering this service for the past 30 years on pro bono. Even with all of these achievements, the pottery faces an enormous challenge of funding. On our visits, its structures looked worn and finished products were covered in dust. Neglect is slowly driving the pottery underground.
An interesting fact about Dajo pottery is that clay needed for production is sourced from the vast land on which it is located. The gorge created from digging clay was eventually turned into a fish pond, creating another source of income. For Mr. Dajo, access to loans and government recognition will go a long way in the survival of the pottery. Yeah, the demand for Nigerian pottery, especially uh, Dajo pottery brand, is very wide. We have a request from America, from the EU, from Southeast Asia, Middle East. Unfortunately, the banks are not cooperating with us. This investment you have seen, uh, we got a facility from a bank. But then, the processing, the production are okay. But the finishing, there is a bottleneck. And we didn't, uh, it wasn't configured during the procurement uh, time. I wouldn't want to say we were shortchanged by uh, machinery suppliers because I want to take the, the responsibility, having been boxed into the corner. So what we did was to revert to our technical partners in the UK and uh, engage the services of a technical auditor who now came, looked at the facility and was able to identify the, the, the pitfall. Uh, through that uh, exercise of auditing, technical audit he did. So when we presented this to our bank and told them that our technical partners are ready to recalibrate our production machinery and then clear the bottleneck by injecting additional uh, machinery to give us uh, a through flow of our production process, uh, the banks were hesitant to give us additional uh, 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 funds to alleviate or to overcome that challenge. It has taken more than three years today and uh, time is running out on everybody. We are not getting younger. But see, our technical partners have entered an MOU with us, a 10-year MOU, if we provide this uh, additional funding, which is, which is uh, now up to 200 uh, million to clear this, inject new this in and get a, uh, a, a sustainable stream of uh, production. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. This is River Guma and the local government we're about to enter right now is named after this river and I tell you that's where the governor of Benue State is from. Let's get in and find out more. Goma is a local government area of Benue State located 37 kilometers from the state's capital, Makodi. It is named after the Goma River. Major towns in Goma are Bajimba, Daudu, Tokula, Kaseyo, and Abense, with Bajimba being the local government headquarters. The town is predominantly occupied by the Teeth, Jukans, Hausa, and Kabuas. His Excellency, Governor of Benue State, Chief Dr. Samuel Autumn, hails from Goma. Majimba is one of the major towns and headquarters of the Guma local government area, Benue State. This town is where the governor himself hails from. The governor is known to be a successful farmer with a big warehouse full of farm produce. Right behind me is the governor's house. Bajimba is one of the major towns in Guma local government area, occupied by the house decades ago. The name Bajimba originated from the mispronunciation of the house of phrase Banjiba, which means I don't understand. The first time, those people that came here, their yeah, forefather they came here, the commuter was a down down here. So they came, the commuter was a, they, they keep bush meat. 
So they can they talk with that man with the Joku language. That man they say no, Benjiba. So the name is growing. Any person can say you come for Bajima. But then here is a forest where people they there for that are close. Before I start taking them, they come near them. They come, they come near them here, they come, come close them. Before they sit down near the river, they say things. Then the mother catch fish, also man they keep bush meat. They did together. Yeah. The town is today occupied by mostly the Jukuns. Aside the governor's house, Bajimba is home to one of the major markets in Guma. The Bajimba market is held every five days and traders especially pride themselves in the truckloads of soybeans and bene seed sold on every market day. Other markets in Guma include the Daudu, Agasha and Abense markets. Farming is one of the major occupations in Bajimba town and this is why the people of Bajimba are known for the art and craft of blacksmithing. This right here is known as makera, used by blacksmiths to forge and create holes, cutlasses and farm tools for farmers. Situated at the bank of the river Benue, the people of Bajimba make use of water amongst other means of transportation. Boats of different sizes are used to transport people and goods to different destinations. They say the fare is cheaper than the land route. This is River Benue, one of the largest rivers in West Africa. Northeast of Abinte town in Guma is the confluence of the rivers Benue and Katsinala. And also serves as a major transportation route for the Benue people. At the left is the Bajimba town. Northeast of Abense town in Guma is the confluence of the rivers Benue and Katsinala. This is where the Katsinala River, which has its source in Bamenda, northwestern Cameroon, meets with the Benue River. The river flows 320 kilometers northwest into eastern Nigeria and passes through the Katsinala town. where the Benue River, which is by my left, meets with the Katsina Ala River, which is by my right. Further down behind me is the Abinse town of the Guma local government area, Benue State, which are especially known for their fishing. Aside from farmers, fishers, traders and blacksmiths, the people of Guma are also warm, receptive and welcoming people. This is Experience in Niger, bringing you all the warmth from Nigeria. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. Hey there! Well, don't I look all sporty? That's because we're experiencing Niger today on the golf course. Welcome to the IBB International Golf and Country Club. World class. Prestigious. Exquisite. This is how you describe the IBB International Golf and Country Club. Reputed to be one of the most beautiful parklands in Sub-Saharan Africa, the club is seated on a vast land of 101 hectares and is situated off Asso Drive, Moitama, Abuja. Named after the former military president of Nigeria, Ibrahim Badamasi Babengida, it was built in 1991. The golf club boasts of recreational facilities for members, guests and tourists alike. These include a world-class golf course, a twin tennis court, a four-star restaurant, and a golf pro shop. All of these we explored.
One of its most prized facilities is its world-class 18-hole par 72 golf course, which is ranked as one of the best golf courses in Africa. Fruit Orchards – Beautifully constructed bridges over bodies of calm water. Ponds, lakes, chipping birds and bamboo trees, and surrounding rocky highlands revealing magnificent views. From the tea box to the green area, it's a blend of nature that makes the experience of golfing even more unforgettable. The back nine of the golf course specifically gives you a special kind of thrill as you come within meters to the gigantic crocodiles. Hole 11 also gives you a beautiful and natural scenery of the Yasso Rock. Tired of the long walks? There are relaxation spots located at different areas on the course just for you to chill. The club also offers trolleys and golf carts for hire to travel between shots and ease the walkout. Caddies are also readily available. Just at the side of the course is a 300 meter driving range with 24 heating bays which is open to beginners all day every day for continuous practice. Of course, yours truly tried her hands at golfing and potted a ball into the 13th hole. The IBB Golf Club hosts a number of internationally recognized tournaments for professionals and amateurs. Are there any record, an internationally recognized tournaments for the IBB Golf Sure, Club? sure. We've hosted several tournaments in the past. And the tournaments are basically classified into two categories. You have one for professionals, uh, which um, there is a company in Nigeria now, West African Golf Tour, which has changed its name to African Tour. At regular intervals, they organize tournaments for professionals and the price money is quite handsome. Sometimes $20,000 involved at a level, mm -hmm. still pedestal compared to international tournaments. But for the amateurs, that is we that play the game for leisure, we normally have regular tournaments sponsored by big corporates like Julius Burgers, Samsung Heavy Industries, Nigeria Central Bank, uh, some of these construction companies, Dantata and Sao. And then the club's calendar, as far as I'm concerned, we also have the Independence Tournament, which comes every year during the, to mark the anniversary of Nigeria's independence. And then the Captain's Cup is coming very soon, which is my cup. Mm. So I'm, I've been going out soliciting for support from all the companies. So April, between April 13 and 16, so I invite you to be part of the event. Sure. It's going to be, it's the biggest calendar, I mean, tournament in our calendar. Oh, the Captain's Cup. Yeah, the Captain's Cup. That, that will uh, mark the end of my tenure as a captain. Oh, we'll definitely be there. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. The Twin Tennis Court is another sporting facility available at the club and a must experience for tennis lovers. Dissecting the golf course into two equal halves is the clubhouse which has a sitting lounge and restaurants for members to unwind and socialize after playing a round of golf or tennis. The restaurant is an exquisite relaxation and refreshment spot with an indoor dining hall and an outdoor sit out capturing the breathtaking views of the course. Be sure that the crew wasn't left out as we were treated to a luscious and sumptuous lunch. Gear yourself up with the appropriate kits which are readily available on display at the golf club's pro shop. Select from a range of golf bags, clubs and drivers, shoes and apparels, as well as other accessories from top brands such as Callaway, Adams, TaylorMade, Cobra, and Titleist. At the Pro Shop, authenticity is guaranteed. Membership of the club consists of ordinary members, corporate members, junior members and overseas members. General Manager Kalib Jawi tells us more about the club's membership. 
All right, so guess who I'm here with, with the general manager of the golf course. Mimi Michi, sir. Yeah, my name is Caleb Petrus Jawi. I'm the general manager of IVD Golf Club. Okay, yeah. nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. So what does it entail being a general manager of such a prestigious and, you know, huge place? All I know today, I'm the general manager of the club. Okay. After serving the club for almost 16, 17 years, before I became the general manager. Um, well, it's not easy because you can imagine managing people above you financially, I mean, education-wise, what have you. But thank God we are going and we are doing that. Yeah. All right, sir. So we have, let's talk about the maintenance of the golf course. Yes. Well, how you guys, how, what's your source of income in the golf course? I'm guessing registrations, right? Yes, the main income is uh, from uh, registration, entrance registration of members. And we also have uh, like uh, free will donation from even our members, individual and corporate organization. Okay. Yeah, mind you, is a non-profit making organization. Yes. And we don't get any subvention from government. So we generate the fund to maintain the golf course, pay staff, and uh, additional development. Talking about these members, how many members have approximately? Like you say, right, approximately, because uh, the uh, at least approximately the paid up members we have is uh, close to 5,000 or thereabout. But we have more than that in thousands. But the active ones and the ones that play, regu play the course regularly, we have about uh, 5,000 and thereabout. And, how, and what percentage of this number are overseas members? Well, about 10, 20 percent of these uh, they are overseas membership. Like, you know, uh, member, I mean, overseas membership is not for foreigners. But, uh, I mean, Nigerians that are permanently residing outside this country are also uh, considered as overseas members. And uh, they, they are expected to be on the course or in, in the country for just three months in a year. That invites you to be an overseas uh, membership. But apart from the overseas membership, we also have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, corporate membership that, I mean, embassies, uh, ministries, and prestatals, all of them are, uh, I mean, can register as overseas, I mean, offer us as, as uh, corporate members. A team of 12 can register in a, a ministry or, or embassy. Many of these embassies in, in Abuja are members of uh, IBB Golf Club. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You're it was welcome. nice meeting you. Yeah. It's been a nice and awesome experience on the IBB You're Golf welcome. Course. Thank You're you very welcome. much, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. I thought you'd never ask. To become a member of the club and enjoy full access to its facilities, all you need to do is have two referrals who are already members fill out and submit the application form and thereafter fulfill all financial requirements. On the other hand, visiting guests who would like to use the club's facilities during their period of visits will be required to pay a one-off green fee. Other tournaments include the CBN Governors Corp, the IBB Ladies Open and the Independence Corp among several others sponsored by corporate bodies. These tournaments bring golfers from all over Africa. Meet, network, socialize and exercise with the society's elites and dignitaries at the IBB International Golf and Country Club. So important health fact about golfing, it increases your life expectancy. I mean, surrounded by nature, walking amongst the greenery, who wouldn't live long? So that's why you should include visiting the IBB International Golf and Country Club into your bucket list. For more of these beautiful sites and fun activities, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on Experience in Ninja. For now, bye. I know Nigeria. 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 Nigeria.
Nigeria is a country blessed with arable lands for agriculture. A great country of diverse and colorful cultures. Blessed with enormous human and natural resources. Full of beautiful stories, attraction of hard-working successful people. United by diverse culture. Nigeria is a country of beautiful loving people. Join me experience Nigeria. Experience. Experience Niger. Niger. Join me. Experience Niger. Idonre Hills remain one of the wonders of nature and a marvelous tourist destination. Estimated to be over 800 years old, they are located in the ancient town of Idonre, Ondo State, southwest Nigeria. It is found to be 15 kilometers southwest of Akure, the state capital. The ancient town is on the hilltop while the new settlement is at the base of the hills. It is said that Idonri Hills in the past offered protection against invaders and are appeased annually. It resides 3,000 feet above sea level and houses a unique ecosystem upon which the cultural landscape has integrated. On getting to the entrance of the hill, you will see a great tree at the entrance of the ancient city of Idonri called the Iraye Tree. Then you can now get prepared to take the steps to the great city beyond the hills of Idonri. Uh, this is the this is my first time here actually. And, uh, I, I think I really enjoyed it myself. I experienced so many things here from the steps. But I could break it at the point in time. But I could break it. And then the Gori Pen from the Gap from the Ottomanai. I thank God that it is and it is very strange, a very good experience. In the year 1906, a law court was established, which includes an ancient prison where the convicts spend their jail term. This place, Udeja, meaning market square. This is where the dogs are buying and selling while they live here, the wrong market here. And in this place, they have four significant things that are needed to notice. First, is the customary court. And behind us is the prison. And after the prison, there's a mausoleum ahead of us. These two, the prison, the court and the prison, were built in 1906. And when you look to my far there, you see the building there is the mausoleum. When they are king, join their ancestors. This is where they will bring them to do the final burial and rites before they will be taken to where they bury them. That is the third one. Then the fourth one is where we call, we perform uh, the Ibde festival. What actually, I told you earlier that what led them to the top of this place is the safety of the crown that uh, a lot of took from Ileife. You know, to do a crown. And they call it a day there. The king of Idonri uses that crown once in a year, and that is when the king will climb this place. That crown is very small, it's in the form of a shell. But once the king put it on, it's expand. The festival is done at usually in the midnight. It's open for everybody, but it's not everybody that can actually be there. It's simply because there's this drum that they beat, very suitable to dance and you cannot dance to it. When the king steps on this place, that is when he starts to proclaim blessing to the land and the Yoruba land. Me and you can see this thing as often as we want to see it. But me and you can never step on this thing. But the king can only see this thing once in a year. But only him can step on it. There are also notable historical monuments on Idori Hills, such as the old primary school buildings, native court building, 
which also includes an ancient prison where the convicts spend their jail term, the mausoleum, the Owa secretary's office, the Olori's quarters and the ancient palace which have all been rehabilitated for conservation. Also included among the remains of the ancient village are shrines, a belfry, the Agbogun footprints, Thunder Water, also known as Omi Albara. This is the Thunder Stream I talked about. It's called Omi Albara. It's what I said when you are your men are going to war then, they will have to drink this water with their palm and satisfy. Once you drink and satisfy, that shows you go to that war and come back safely. But once you drink and you are not satisfied, that means you go to that war and you will not come back. Old and dilapidated mud buildings roofed in rusty brown iron sheets set on well laid out streets and burial mounds on grounds and the Owas Palace. Spectacularly, the inner court of the palace is beautifully decorated with sculptural carvings used as pillars along the length and breadth of the court. These carvings are said to depict the loyal servants of the ruling kings at different reigns. We are approaching Esekubeji. Oh. In those days, when you, as the invaders escaped from that dark spot, this is the other, other place that they, they will trap them down. They call this place Esekubeji. I mean, the very narrow road, then you don't look back, and it has valley at the both side. So, if an indigent is coming, if you get to this side, it has a deep signal. And when if, if any other person coming from the other side to respond to the signal. So if, if there's no one coming, you will just go. But if there's anyone coming, one will have to wait for the other. But if an intruder is coming, you don't know what they do. So you just walk and they trap them down at the valley there. So, yeah. we'll just get to the Another fascinating aspect of the hill, which always bring wonder to the mind of tourists, are the unreadable letters believed to be a mysterious handwriting. These letters are etched on the rock, and no one has been able to decipher its meaning since it was noticed conspicuously on the rock. There is also a river known as the Arun River. This river is believed to have natural powers to heal all kinds and manners of ailments and diseases thus making it one of the most visited spots on the hilltop. Another mesmerizing feature that can be found on the hilltop is the Agbogun footprint. This mysterious footprint presents an attractive specter of a mythical shoe print which could fit into the size of anyone who puts their foot into it. And legend has it that anyone whose foot could not size the footprint is deemed an evil person. However, Western civilization was introduced to the ancient city when a team of missionaries led by Reverend Gilbert Carter arrived in the year 1894. The missionaries built the first primary school in the year 1896 and the clay building still stands strong till this day. We are now at the first primary school of Udonri. It's called Igori Elementary School. This school was built in the year 1819 by the missionaries. So when the missionaries came to Idare, this is they find it difficult to accept them because they came with uh, religion and uh, Western education. So uh, the Dari people believe in their gods, the traditional gods that they worship. So. They find it difficult to accept the new religion that was brought by the missionaries. But later, they were able to accept them and give them an evil forest, believing that they would not survive in that place. But um, eventually, they survived the place. But their belief is that the, the evil will consume them. But they survived the place, and they now change the name of the place to Bowie. That's how they call the name the school, Bowie Elementary School. You see, I have a lot of place here. We have a, a wonderful, there is a wonderful rock here. We have a readable letter. 
Uh, we, we couldn't get to the palace now because um, uh, of the weather, so that the rain doesn't catch up with us here. So we need to go. The, the Anu River is far ahead there. Then the road to the footprint is also to the yes, it's also to that side. That is the Agaga Hill. You can see that hill over there. That is the hill you have to climb and descend to the other side to get to the footprint, the Agbogu footprint. So actually, we can't do that today. And this part is the uh, road to the palace and uh, the road to the uh, wonderful rock and the unreadable letter. The one they call uh, the Echo Way or Yvokati. It's actually inscribed on the rock. That's unreadable letter. Uh, the Echo Way or Yvokati. It's inscribed on the rock. There's no, no, nobody that's been able to translate what is written there. Different countries have been here, but see yet, no one has been able to translate what is written on that rock. So, uh, at the same time, here they, they, they said they had, we, we heard that there's Ark of Noah. Hmm. All of us know that Ark of Noah is not in Africa, but uh, there's a rock that have that formation here. That's why we believe it's Ark of Noah.
Nigeria. 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 Nigeria is a country blessed with arable lands for agriculture. A great country of diverse and colorful cultures. Blessed with enormous human and natural resources. Full of beautiful tourist attraction of hard-working successful people. United by diverse culture. Nigeria is a country of beautiful loving people. Join me experience Nigeria. Experience. Experience Niger. Niger. Join me, experience Niger. Technological progress has made us forget those safe havens whose confines are faithful sanctuaries of peace. Places of unrestricted awesomeness like the Ikogosi Warm Spring. Ikogosi Warm Spring is unarguably a geological wonder. The Ikogosi Warm Springs is a tourist attraction located at Ikogosi, a town in Ikiti State, southwest Nigeria. Tucked away in the rustic and serene town of Ikogosi Ikiti in Ikiti State, the hills at the warm spring are surrounded by a vegetation which is highly thick forest with natural and rich vegetation that is closely maintained and protected from arbitrary deforestation. Flowing abreast the warm spring is another cold spring which meets the former at a confluence, each maintaining its thermal properties. These attributes make the spring a foremost tourist attraction in Nigeria. Research suggests that the warm spring has a temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius at the source and 37 degrees Celsius at the confluence. The spring sprouts out and flow with a constant temperature and volume all year round. Alright, right now it's like I'm in the confluence of some sort because my left foot right now is inside, it's immersed in warm water while my right foot is immersed in cold water like if I was to guess the temperature of this water, it would be below 15 degrees. While well, this would be way above 40 degrees or 45 degrees Celsius. And now this is the meeting point. If you can um, look at it carefully or closely, you would see the distinction between uh, uh, the color of the waters. All right, this one is kind of darker. Why well, this one looks clearer? All right, this is the warm water. It comes from the east here, and the cold water comes from the west here and this is the meeting point right now because I'm feeling cold on my right side mm. and I'm feeling hot on my left side this is the beauty of nature this is Ikogosi warm and cool springs in Ekiti State a myth surrounding the origin and discovery of the warm and cold springs is that they were both wives of a great hunter one was temperamental and the other a quiet woman one day the wives had a fight and after being rebuked by their husband the temperamental wife changed to the warm spring, while the quiet one turned to the cold spring. Ikogosi, known for its unique curative power, is widely believed to have some kind of therapeutic effect which relieves body aches and all sorts of ailments. There is also a large sized swimming pool available at Ikogosi Warm Springs Resort. The pool water flows directly from the spring so it is natural and clean all year round. Heading towards the meeting point of the cold and warm water, the well designed walk trail is sure to amaze you. Birds chirping and the chilliness of the forest environment along the walking trail would leave you wrapped up in the placidity that one gets while taking a nature walk. A monkey can also be seen hopping around in a cage with eyes pleading for goodies from tourists. The commune with nature's beauty is one ecstasy only a serene heart can appreciate. Connecting with nature could not be more rewarding.
Beneath these side attractions lie the beautiful magic of the resort, the warm and cold springs galloping from separate spring points. Geologists claim the source of the warm spring is a deep fracture in the basement and that its source of heat is due to the normal geothermal gradients of the subsurface and not deep-seated mantle plumb beneath the area. The whole environment of the area is left untouched by the government for ecotourism appeal, while the source of the warm springs have been provided a canopy so that tourists and visitors can relax underneath. The area covered by the spring is about 31.38 meters and it is highly protected from erosion by tall and evergreen trees. The trees also serve as a sort of canopy under which tourists could stay during the dry season and sunny days. The undulating topography of the area and the symmetry of the surrounding hills add more to the aesthetic beauty of the spring.
Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. So we'll be taking a roller coaster ride all through Nigeria's finest tourist attractions. Kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Experience in Niger. Well, there you have it. Do not forget to capture the memories while experiencing the full fun package at the Jabi Lake in Abuja. Feel the excitement, experience the joy, and keep it locked as we explore the magnificence of our very own on Experience in Niger. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Experience in Niger. For more of Nigeria's finest tourist attractions, kindly click the subscribe button. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Experience in Niger. This one gave bone. You want to be just okay. Okay, Ty, let me give you seven hundred naira. Let me give you seven hundred. No, seven hundred. Seven hundred. Uh, Bye-bye. Yeah, okay, give us some packet of bag, yes? No, it will be more for you, but we're going to reduce it, yeah. Are we, are we getting it? And pop crepe fish I'm running. Okay. We're buying one cup. Okay. You give us one cup.
شده پا برو مرگ پا There's a stick inside. You have to remove. You have to remove this stick. This one is not good. This very good. It's not good. You can also use your knife. This one is not good. So this one we're going to use. It's just the back. Yes, just the back. To do it, Chanina. The melon, the onion, and the maggi. A cube of no maggi. Melon, onion, one cube of no maggi, and rounded pepper. 